One, um, before I call the meeting to order, let me just recognize some special people that are here with us this morning. First of all, probably the most faithful attendee of the city council meeting is here, and I wanted to acknowledge him, Mr. Earl Anderson, who served a number of years on the West Tennessee Healthcare Board of Trustees. Uh, he's not currently helping us with the Sports Flex Advisory Committee. He and his wife, Louise, are here at just about every meeting. So, Earl, would you stand and let us recognize you? Thank you. Thank you for your Also, we have uh, Senator Ed Jackson with us this morning. Uh, good to have you here, Senator. And also, Sheriff John Mayer, who will be addressing the council uh, a little bit later on in the agenda. So, thank you all for being here, and we will call the May 2nd, 2016 meeting of the Jackson City Council to order. And if you will, uh, please rise for the invocation and pledge by Councilman Harvey Buchanan. Good morning. <laughs> Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. This morning, our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you petitioning thy throne of grace. First of all, thanking you for the many blessings that you have so richly bestowed upon us. We thank you for the gift of your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died on the cross and rose again with all power in his hand. We thank you, Father, for everything. We ask you to forgive us of our many sins that we have transgressed against thee. Now, Father, we ask you to look in on the Wallace family, this council, when Randy Wallace lost his father yesterday, we ask you to comfort them in their time of bereavement. And Father, as we assemble here in this Taj Mahal building, we ask, Father, that you give us a servant attitude. If we get too high, bring us down. If we get too low, raise us up. Teach us to be humble to serve the people, because we're nothing but servants. Grant us wisdom, courage, knowledge, and conviction to do the things for all sections of Jackson, because we are one Jackson. We thank you, Father, and we're grateful to you. We give you the praise, we give you the glory. The honor is already yours. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank God. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I need a few wouldn't mind pulling a quick correction to my opening statement. This is May the 3rd. Time flies when you're having a good time. Um, you, know, you can show, I think, all council members present, with the exception of Councilman Randy Wallace. We remember to be in prayer for he and his family. Uh, next item is approval of the minutes, April 5th, 2016, City Council meeting. Uh, council members have received a copy of those minutes. If there's no addition, deletions, or changes, uh, we'll go ahead and accept those minutes as submitted. Item five is the invitation for public comment. And if there's anyone here who wish to be heard on any item under new business, if you would let me know at that time, I'll be happy to call on you and let you come up and address the council. We have no proclamations this morning. We have one recognition, item seven, and that's the uh, Jackson, Tennessee Convention of Visitor Bureau. Uh, Ms. Lori Nunner, if you'd come up and make your comments to the council. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Morning, First of all, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to come before you today. Um, it has been a great year tourism-wise, and we're just going to give you kind of an update of, of where we've been in 25, 2015 and where we're going in 2016. Um, as I mentioned, I wanted to say thank you. We appreciate the investment that this council has made in tourism, and it is making a continued difference in our community. Um, I. I 
I said not long ago to the county commission when I spoke, I said, you know, I, I want to thank you. My husband wants to thank you. Both of my girls, Jillian and Jenna, want to thank you. Uh, we were able this year in February to hire uh, Paige Reed. We stole her from the chamber. Um, I, I like her work ethic, and we're really thrilled to have her on board. And she's making such a difference in our office. We're able to do more things, attend more meetings, and be pr more proactively involved. And that is directly a result of the f additional funding that the city council and the county commission invested in tourism last year. So we, th we all thank you, my whole family. Um, looking at our numbers over 2015, we saw an increase of about 12.5%. And some people would say, well, that's not a lot of growth. Uh, but actually, when you take that number and convert it into dollars, in 2015, we saw an increase alone, I'm sorry, an increase alone of over $3.7 million dollars and hotel room sales so our investment in tourism is paying off it's continuing to grow and I will tell you we've had the numbers come out for January and February of this year January was up 17 percent and February was up nearly 20 percent in the collection of hotel motel taxes now people will ask what's going on why is that growth and I like to think it's all of my marketing savvy but I have to be honest and say there's a lot of great things that are coming together at this time. First of all, the, uh, the increased dollars that Governor Haslam is investing in tourism is paying off. He's able to help us to extend our reach beyond those border states and get that out there nationally. That $8 million increase on a state level is making a difference. Also what's helping us is the continued expense of staying in Nashville or Memphis. If any of you have been there lately, you know that their room nights are tremendously priced. I know that we were there on business a few weeks ago, and the room cost was $289, and then you added on a, another $60 in taxes. That's helping us. So thank you, Nashville. Thank you, Memphis. Um, then finally, I think the investment, I don't think I know the investment that the city and the county are making in tourism. Uh, we were able to basically double our marketing budget last year. And we were able to participate in the different co-ops offered by the state that we would have never been able to be a part of in historically. So we're very excited about those. Now those results are just, go they're going into market now. So we're not gonna see those results for a few more months up to a year later. But that's okay, that's okay. It's gonna continue to make a difference in what we're doing. Um, so we've talked about the growth of 2015 at $3.7 million and the growth of where we are this year. Uh, what we're trying to, to look for is new and innovative ways of marketing. We'll see on an average that um, we average about 40 Facebook posts. We also are doing about 12 press releases a month, and then we're doing about 22 tweets on twi Twitter. I'll say that fast. Um, so there's a lot of things going on. When I first started this job, we would buy an ad, we would host a, a fam tour where travel writers come in. It was more spaced out. Every day we are actively engaged in what's happening in the internet and trying to make sure that the message of Jackson and Madison County and West Tennessee is positive and that it's truly representative of what's happening here. So we appreciate any help that we can get in to spread that positive message about our community because it is very important. Yesterday I had the pleasure of speaking to the Rotary Group and we did a little bit of demographic research to talk to them about how they plan their travel. We asked how many of them were on Facebook, how many of them were on Twitter, what other social media they did. And then it was really interesting. I was surprised at probably about 90% of the room was on Facebook, which I wouldn't have quite expected. And there was probably about 40 to 50 percent that were on Twitter. So we know that we're, we're kind of shoot, we're shooting in the right direction for the social media and engaging that. It was interesting when we talked about, uh, so many people remember those trip ticks that the auto club would give you where you'd flip through them and you would have, uh, you would look at your trips. Back when I was growing up, that's what we used to travel. Well nowadays it's a completely different world. It's internet based and we have to make sure that what's getting out about our community is right and accurate and that we get as much out in as many different places as possible. So it's a little different beast from where I started seven years ago with this office. It's changed drastically and it's continuing to evolve and we have to stay uh, abreast of those changes uh, for tourism. 
Uh, there are several events that we've had the fortunate ability to be involved in. Um, one of the events that I'll talk about last year was Christmas in the City. This was a new event that was created as part of the season of Unity. And what we did is we brought all the nonprofits under one umbrella. We got them down at the farmer's market. We found that so many nonprofits were doing smaller events throughout the community, and we were all kind of cannibalizing our donor base. What we wanted to do was to create a larger event where people could come in from outside of this community and it would give exposure to our nonprofits, an opportunity for them to raise more money with less resources and we would help with the marketing. Uh, that event was very successful for so many different participants in it, but we have over 3,000 guests down at the farmer's market on a beautiful Saturday in December last year and we're excited about what's going forward in 20, 2016 with that event. So when you look at our office, not only do we handle the marketing and social media, but it's also about product development for our community. Developing the Christmas in the city, working with the Ohio Valley Conference baseball championships, to celebrating Bemis Days, to helping Lane College uh, in whatever way they need for, for their homecoming activities. You'll see us involved in a lot of different, different avenues. One of the things in the packet in front of you, you'll also see is a schedule of the AMP. It's a great quality of life event. We're starting off our season this Friday on May the 6th, and you'll see that there are 11 free concerts that are offered at the AMP throughout, throughout uh, the year, and we're finishing up on October the 1st. Um, so there's a lot of great activities that we have the opportunity to be involved with. What I will tell you that any funding that comes into this office, it is my commitment that 65% of that money will go towards advertising and marketing. Only 25% will go towards additional staff and acquiring different team members. And then 10% is towards operations. So you can know that when you invest in us, that the money is accounted for and it's going forward with what our hoteliers and our tourism partners want, and that is marketing. That is our primary focus. But one of the things that we're challenged with is when you look at comparable markets, when you look at Clarksville, when you, when you look at Muscle Shoals, when you look at Corinth, they have a staff of eight to 11 people and they have over $1 million in their budget. And so we are challenged by that. Not complaining, it's just the way it is. And for us to be competitive, we're gonna have to look at continuing to grow this office. But thank you for your support. Thank you for helping us to move the needle forward on tourism, and we look forward to many more years where we continue to grow what's happening in Jackson. Are there any questions I could answer? Thank you, Lori. Lori is located at the chamber, <coughs> in case any of you all want to, to visit, been there for a number of years. So any questions or any comments from council? I have a question, if I may. Good morning, Lori. Good morning. Uh, we appreciate the work that you do, first of all. Thank you. Uh, my question is relative to conventions. Mm -hmm. um, first, uh, about how many conventions do we have a year? Um, secondly, uh, how large are those groups? And uh, lastly, what are the challenges uh, that, that you see um, in getting more convention business? Well, thank you for that. That's a great question. Um, as far as a number on the conventions, um, our primary hotel is the Doubletree Hotel that has meeting room space and food and beverage. And as you all know, because you've been to meetings there, they can, they can, their capacity is about 200 to 225 for most of their events. So once you get over that number, we're not getting those conventions. And I'll be honest with you, we're not even getting those calls anymore because they know if they have a convention meeting over 225 people that Jackson cannot accommodate. We do have other venues like the Carl Perkins Civic Center and other venues throughout the community that can do it. But so many of our conventions want a one-stop shop. They want to be able sure. to roll out of their bed and basically go to the meeting. And I'm sure you've all been to conferences that way. That's, that's our biggest challenge. I did get a call actually this week, um, and I would say over the last, and remember, we're off the radar convention wives if, if it's over 225. Mm -hmm. Probably over the last four weeks, I've had about six calls about conventions that are 400 or more <coughs> that we haven't been able to accommodate. And there's a huge hole in this market. Um, we definitely could use a conference center that could accommodate groups. And I would say groups, um, I would look at six to 800, mm -hmm. that mid-market size. Right. And, and one of the things about Jackson, and, and here's why the timing is so important. Nashville is pricing themselves out of business, folks. The, the local associations cannot afford to go to Nashville. So where are they going? Well, they're not coming here because we can't accommodate them right now. We've even talked about free shuttles from the hotel down to the convention center, and that's not of interest to them. So there's, there's a, the, 
we need to strike soon. We need to do this. And I'll tell you, people have asked me, they say, well, where do you want your convention center? Folks, I don't care. We just need one. Uh, Thank you. Lori, just one thing for clarification. Mm -hmm. When you're saying um, we could use another convention center mm -hmm. that would hold more people, and are you talking in terms of not just the space to house them for the conference, but also the hotel? Yes, it needs to be a combination. Um, most people are familiar with like the Embassy Suites in Murfreesboro. They have a great model there where they're uh, able to accompany, uh, have many groups in there at one time. And that's what we have to do. It, it, we don't just want to be a one-stop, one place just catering to one group. Anything that we develop in this community has to be very <coughs> flexible, not only to meet the needs of people coming out of, into our community, but then serving the people in our community. We have to make it as multi-purpose as possible. And do you have any idea of how many people you've had to turn down, how many conventions, say, in the last week, the last six months, you know, whatever you have? About in the last month, about, I, I think it was between... I'm going to go with five because I, I remember four solid, and then we had one call yesterday. But remember, we're off their radar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. One, one other quick question, mm -hmm. or just, I guess, a, a comment. Uh, we do have the number of restaurants and entertainment to, to handle that size of a convention, would, would you say? We do, um, but I mean, if, you, if you've been out to the restaurants on a weekend night, you right. see how, you know, it could always generate more growth and, right. and, and more things going on. Right. So, and we do have the available space throughout the community. So there's always opportunity for more growth. And I think, you know, I, I think I would be remiss if I didn't mention with the sports term, tournament element that we have here with what's going on at the Sportsplex, the success of the Jackson Generals, the new tennis complex, the soccer fields. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity for growth here. And I know the county is looking at adding some more soccer fields. And I would say, let's continue to have those discussions and open it up even larger because there is great potential in the tennis as well. There's, there's great opportunity there. I, the one thing that I, I talk to people about is, is thinking about our community and celebrating the successes. We do have a great community here. We have a lot of people who are doing great things. We just got to keep on and keep celebrating and be innovative in our ideas. There are no limitations at what this community can do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Thank you very much, Lori. Thank you. Appreciate your report. I <laughs> made under first readings, we have a presentation of an ordinance to amend Title V, Chapter 6. Section 601, the purchases of less than 10000 but more than $5,000. I think that was due to a change in legislation in the General Assembly, is it not? That's true. And periodically, can you hear me? Periodically, the state of Tennessee increases the threshold on our bids. Currently, anything over $10,000 goes out on sealed bids. But the governor signed into law last April of 2015 <laughs> that any purchases over $25,000 will go out on sealed bids. Anything from $10,000 to $25,000 will require three quotes. And I would recommend that the city take advantage of these new limits. Do you have any questions? <laughs> any questions from council as to passage of this ordinance? Is there a motion? Then we'll have to have a public hearing. I so move. Okay, Second. we have a motion. And let me, uh, this is an ordinance on first reading, which requires a public hearing. So let me open the public hearing now and see if there's anyone here who would like to speak in support of or in opposition to the passage of this ordinance. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and I'll accept a second for adoption. Second. We have a second. Any discussion from council? Council, please vote. And the vote passes with seven members in favor and one voting no. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. Uh, out of nine is second readings on ordinances, consideration of the ordinance to amend, modify the municipal code relative to motor vehicles, traffic, and parking. Title 15, Chapter 9, Section 15, and Title 9, Chapter 9, Parking Meters, Section 15. Council has approved this ordinance on first reading previously. Move for approval. So second. A motion and a second. Discussion from council? 
Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Second ordinance on second reading is consideration of the ordinance to amend, modify the municipal code relative to business, peddlers, solicitors, etc. Title Nine, Chapter One, Section 101, 104, and 106. Council has. We have a motion for approval. Second. And a second. Discussion. Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Item 10 is under new business. The first item is consideration of resolution to transfer partial ownership of city county owned property, Mount 90, partial 702 uh, to the state of Tennessee for relocation of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation Regional Office Crime Lab and Criminal Division to Jackson, Madison County. Um, have the council has that resolution and we do have uh, Sheriff John Mayer here. John, if you'd come up and, and uh, have any questions, we appreciate the help of our local delegation in getting this through the governor's budget and especially appreciate the governor because he included this in his budget submitted to the General Assembly. It was approved and we look forward to construction of this great facility in West Tennessee, especially right here in Jackson, Madison County, which will eventually employ 70, 80, 90 people. So Sheriff, welcome. Well, this, this is a project that started back in 2012. Um, we all got together and trying to relocate the, the crime lab to Jackson because police departments throughout West Tennessee and district attorneys and everybody's are affected because evidence is not being timely submitted to the lab to be tested. So if Jackson goes in or Madison County or we carry 100 pieces of evidence um, today, we've held it for 30 days and then Humboldt comes in and they come every week uh, and they submit theirs theirs is behind ours so uh, it delays and so you're seeing court appearances put off for six months to a year uh, the lab used to be in Jackson uh, Governor Bredesen closed it when we built a smaller lab in Memphis to help Memphis uh, and so everybody was transferred so that's in a flood zone we were able to uh, take the same design, or it will be the same design as in Memphis, I mean the Knoxville lab, which is a consolidated facility. Ours will, uh, in Madison County will be a little bit larger. Actually, it will be a full service lab, doing latent prints and ballistics. Uh, and Senator Ed Jackson's here, and uh, he was very uh, helpful in this endeavor with the governor and, and all the house members all the senators before this, we actually got all law enforcement in West Tennessee, all the judges, all the district attorneys uh, supported this, this move. And um, I had to look at a location that was convenient for everybody so that being that it's right off the interstate, <coughs> everybody will be able to transport their evidence. Hopefully every week uh, there will be additional forensic scientists that will be employed but it would be a 40, about a 45,000 square foot facility. Uh, cost is around $25 million. Uh, so Lori was here talking about what it would bring in. Uh, it would bring in people every day to Jackson, bringing evidence in. Uh, of course, as you know, the TBI is uh, a national accredited agency. The lab is also international accredited. Uh, so we can bring in lots of other people uh, for training and all, but the lab will, and the consolidated system will be good. The crime scene teams that work West Tennessee will be out, actually housed out of the lab there, so the response team, it's an hour in any direction in West Tennessee uh, in Jackson's hub, and um, it's a great addition to Jackson, Madison County in West Tennessee. Sure, if we're talking about a <coughs> roughly a 10-acre site. Yes, sir. Uh, piece that's jointly owned with Madison County and uh, we look forward to, to getting underway getting the concrete in the ground and I think the reason we had to revise the agenda and get this on because I think the state is pretty much ready to get in on the property do their soil testing and do some uh, some prerequisite stuff that's got to be done prior to uh, to getting it built so that's the reason for the item on the agenda I want to commend the sheriff this he, he birthed this project a number of years ago. I remember going out to his office when he was with the TBI and talking about this and working with the county. So I commend him and his tenacity 
in keeping this project um, on the on the list in Nashville, and this year we were successful in getting it funded. So thank you, Sheriff, for your you. for your um, work in that. Any Mayor, questions? Mayor, if I may, Sheriff, we appreciate your hard work and everything you do, and especially getting this done for us. I'm, I think I've overlooked it, or can't remember where exactly is that land going to be at. It's right there, across basically from Kirkland's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's a 38-acre plot right there. That, there's a recycle center mm -hmm. uh, on one corner, and so it would be a great location for it. Yeah. And uh, actually, I think that um, having the uh, TDI to come there in this state-of-the-art facility, I mean, it's, it's, it'll be actually better than Knoxville. So, uh, Good. And we'll be doing more than Knoxville. So uh, it's, uh, the director is... is 100% behind it has been, and you know it's it's a win for all of us, and mm -hmm. we can see great things. That's great news. In the future. And also, Sheriff, uh, and aside to uh, everything else you mentioned, it's going to save us some money, isn't it? Because we're not going to have to go to. It's going to save all law enforcement money. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, the, and, and you know it, this has a big impact when you, you can't get everything tested, and when the departments hold their evidence, uh, and only go once. In the, we always went once a week uh, carrying it to Nashville. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so now, you know, it's, there's no reason that the other agencies throughout West Tennessee, it's an hour away. Mm -hmm. And it's very helpful, and especially the larger ones like us and, and Jackson. Mm -hmm. You know, we're it's right here, so we can go every day. That's right. That's Senator great. Jackson, you want to you come up and share with us how you and Representative Elridge and Representative Shaw got this through the General Assembly? Thank you, Mayor and Councilman. Um, I guess uh, Sheriff Mayor and I started talking about this uh, probably two to three, three years ago. And this is when I first learned that this was an issue. It had been in the budget uh, for numerous years, but never was funded. <coughs> so uh, we, he, he and I, well, Sheriff Mayor, and I got together and put together a plan. He had letters from every sheriff, uh, every chief of police, uh, the district attorneys uh, in West Tennessee, including Memphis, Shelby County, where the lab is now, uh, and uh, that this would really help them to, for it to be in a central location. Plus, the lab in Memphis is too small. Uh, it, it's undersized, had a lot of uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, uh, problems, uh, heating and air conditioning problems, things that they would have to shut it down periodically. So uh, it... I guess we, what we needed to do is get the attention of the, uh, the governor and his staff that how important this was. It would be a game changer for, uh, for the West Tennessee in, in law enforcement, uh, make a big difference. So uh, myself and, and Sheriff Mayor met with the, the governor and, uh, and actually uh, told him how important this was. And uh, so we got funded. And so that is long story short, it did get yeah. funded and has been, <coughs> been a really a, a good, uh, It'll be a huge boost for Jackson in West Tennessee uh, to, with all the forensic scientists that will live here. And uh, I think there's about 70 of those, and it, it could be as many as 100 employees uh, employed out there. Mm -hmm. Nice paying job. So right. this will be a, a <coughs> good boost and a game changer for law enforcement in West Tennessee. Yeah. We appreciate your effort, uh, Senator. And also, the director of the TBI, Mark Gwynn, was very, very supportive of it from day one. So we Certainly want to thank him for his efforts. Any other comments? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment, Mayor. Yeah, sure. Uh, Sheriff, I'd like to thank you on your endeavor and work because I know what uh, is involved in and what's needed uh, in this area, and this makes it centrally located, which uh, will enable us to probably solve to maybe a few more crimes uh, quicker and uh, uh, put the bad guys away. And just thank you and the governor and Senator Ed and and uh, uh, Representative uh, Shaw and Eldridge and the governor. And because uh, it's uh, meaningful for our area, but it's uh, meaningful for, for protection of the people of our area. So thank you. Awesome. I'd like to make a motion we approve this. Uh, second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion from council? Please vote. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator, Mr. for coming Mr. back. Mayor, I appreciate like your effort. Also, that um, uh, Beth Harville, who was over the representatives, uh, she was, we met with her and she <coughs> was 100% behind it from right. day one. And, right. uh, so having a boost from her and uh, Mr. Ramsey, yeah. we're going to go 
Yeah, thanks. Hey, it it uh, pretty much it was a, a team thing. We had uh, had to get even the people in the uh, senators and representatives in, in the Shelby County right. area to agree to let that go and come to West Tennessee. Yeah. They saw the the importance of it, and then also uh, uh, the lieutenant governor and, and uh, Speaker Harwell um, all were privy to it and bought into it and, and saw how important it was. So. It was, a, it was a, I think, uh, once everybody got word of it and how important it was, uh, they uh, bought into it. Probably a little bit more difficult to get the Memphis delegation on board, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate y'all doing that. The most I, I know important are the guys that got it going in the first place. That's right. That's right. And we thank you for that. Well, thank you, guys. We appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Next under your business consideration of the lease for the grill at the farmer's market, Ms. White. For the past three years, Woodstock Bakery has had a lease with the city of Jackson at the grill at farmer's market. And as you know, last month they moved into a new location across from the courthouse and they're doing very well over there. But we don't have anyone to serve foods in the grill anymore, so I sent out proposals and I received two that were non-responsive. The people weren't just ready to make that decision to commit yet, but I did have a responsive proposal from Community Cafe, Amy Crenshaw, and this will be her second location at the grill. She'll serve breakfast foods and use ingredients from the farmer's market. She'll be open Thursday through Saturday all year long. And she does meet the terms of the agreement. And she will start work, I believe, Saturday if you approve this contract with Community Cafe. Move for approval. Second. second. Motion for approval. Proper second. second. Any discussion? <coughs> Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Thank you, Ms. White. The next item is consideration of contract with Vision Insurance. We currently have a contract with VSP for City Employees Vision Insurance. So we took proposals to see if we could find better pricing, and we did. Uh, we received four proposals, VSP, Humana Brentwood, MetLife, and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. And as you can see from your spreadsheet, Blue Cross Blue Shield, their fee is $4.40 for the monthly premium on a single plan and $11.44 for the monthly premium on a family plan. So this is less than our employees are currently paying. So Stacy Stone is here if you've got any questions about the details, but this is the lowest and best bid for our city employees. Move for approval. Second. A motion for approval. Properly second. Any discussion from council? Council, please vote. <coughs> vote unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. Item five is consideration of a resolution adopting the hazard mitigation plan for Madison County, Tennessee, and the incorporated cities of Jackson, Three Way, and Meaden. <coughs> presented by uh, Rachel Vester, planner with the Jackson Madison County Emergency Management Agency. You come on up. Morning. Our um, hazard mitigation plan is required to be updated every five years, and it is due to be updated now. It um, has already been reviewed and approved by FEMA, but the final approval has to be done after adoption by Madison County, City of Jackson, the City of Three Way, and the City of Meeting. Okay. Tried to get this on last month's agenda, but we couldn't, yes, sir. <laughs> couldn't work it in at the last minute. So, is any questions? Uh, about the hazard mitigation plan. Move to approve. We have a motion for approval. Second. Second. Any discussion from council? Council, please vote. Vote is unanimous. Thank you very much. Item six <clears throat> is consideration of resolution to approve the community development annual action plan for 2016-17. Uh, presented by Latoya Faison and Jackson Housing Authority, and we have some people here with her if they would like to come up. 
You tried to leave, didn't you, Winston? <laughs> get, get ready to get the chair. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Um, what we have for you all today is the uh, annual action plan 2016-2017 for the Community Development Office, um, which will actually begin July 1, 2016. The action plan, we prepare that annually uh, based upon the goals and objectives uh, and strategies, rather, of the five-year consolidated plan, and uh, you all approved our latest five-year plan last year. We held a public hearing April 14th to present the plan to the public for public review and comment. We also had a 30-day public review period um, for the entire month of April, which we received no comments or questions on the plan. The plan was also presented to the Jackson Housing Authority's Board of Commissioners uh, at their April board meeting, and they did approve, uh, approve recommendation for submittal to you all. This year, uh, we have, of course, uh, you may know, we have three funding sources, the Community Development Block Grant, or CDBG, the Home Funds, and the Emergency Solutions Homeless Grant. The CDBG and Home Funds, we received a slight increase uh, in both of those funding sources. Uh, for CDBG, we'll be receiving about uh, $498,396 which is uh, approximately a $7,000 increase from last year. Home funds will be receiving $211,605, which is about a $10,000 increase. The ESG funds we received from THDA, we received a decrease in those funds of about $40,000. So we'll be receiving $113,609 in that. However, that decrease is due to THDA planning to eliminate small city set-aside funding within the next year or two and have the nonprofit agencies apply directly to them rather than coming through us because we're, rather, we're just a pass-through agency on the ESG funds, so we subcontract those out. So, But they're planning to have the nonprofits apply directly and make all the funding competitive. So that's why there's a decrease there. Um, we provided for you all a budget. Um, on the CDBG funds, we budgeted 20% for administration, 15% for public services for agencies such as Western East Legal Services, Southwest HRA's WIA, At Risk Youth Program, and Operation Hope. We also budgeted additional 10% uh, to Boys and Girls Club uh, for public services. Um, we're allowed an additional 10% for eligible CBDL, community-based development organization activities in the NRSA, which is primarily East Jackson. And NRSA is Neighborhood Revitalization <coughs> Strategy Area. <laughs> um, $234,000 of the uh, CDBG funds is budgeted for the repayment of the Section 108 loan, which makes up approximately 40%, 47% of the total CDBG allocation. Uh, the balance of funds we committed to housing activities, Jackson Center for Independent Living, and minor repair. Home funds, we budgeted 10% for administration, $120,000 for our community housing development organizations, which is Jonah Affordable Housing and Affordable Housing, C excuse me, Southwest CDC, uh, for acquisition and rehab activities. $20,000 was budgeted for down payment assistance uh, for first time home buyers, and the balance of those home funds was budgeted for target rehabilitation activities. And of course, the emergency solutions uh, grant funding will go to homeless services for nonprofit agencies. We'll be budgeting those funds too. Any questions? Any questions or comments from council? Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, Ms. Mr. Hennings and Ms. Faison. Good morning. With regard to your action plan, it's very well put together, but something you said caught my eye with uh -huh. respect to the, in the future, that agencies going to have to apply for? The Emergency Solutions Grant, that is the homeless funding we receive from THDA. Uh, however, THDA, THDA in, in the past, 
has set aside funding for small cities such as Jackson. Mm -hmm. And that money comes to us and we just subcontract to nonprofit agencies such as Air Relief Ministry, mm -hmm. Southwest, um, West Tennessee Legal Services, and uh, RAP to provide homeless services in the city of Jackson. But what THDA wants to do is make all of that funding competitive. So they're going to eventually eliminate small city set aside funding and have our nonprofits apply directly to them for that funding. The, the, the funding will still be there. They just won't, they're just not guaranteed it from us. They'll have to apply for it. So it will come up next, next fiscal year or? Uh, they didn't give me a time frame. They just said within the next year or two. And, and to put it in their terms, they're trying to wean nonprofit agencies off the small cities right now. Yeah. <laughs> so. With re regard to the project on Whitehall with the six homes, mm -hmm. uh, are, you, are you partnering with Southwest on that? We are. At this time? We are. That's for home ownership? Yes. Okay. Yes, and they'll be building five home, five to six homes. Are they underway yes. on that project? Do you know? They are. They are. Yeah, they, I think they completed <clears throat> demolition. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, any other questions or comments from council? I, I had a action? question relative to uh, section 108. Mm -hmm. uh, what progress are we making and can you tell us what, what projects are uh, affiliated with the section 108? Uh, right, currently program? in district two, the funds, uh, the homes that he was just talking about, Southwest, they're, they're working on those five to six homes mm -hmm. to get those built. And also, there's a retail development on Whitehall, mm -hmm. Whitehall, Whitehall. Right, uh huh, mm -hmm. under underway. <clears throat> and those funds also are for job creation, as yes, I understand. Yes, that would be through the retail development. Okay, and, and what's our progress there? Uh, they're still uh, working on building. Okay, so uh -huh. so the jobs that will will be created. Will right, be once once it's working. built and and, okay. and their okay. uh, businesses there. Any, do you have any numbers <laughs> relative to how many jobs those may be? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure. I have to check on the actual funding amount. Okay. Will you get back to me on that? I sure will. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hennessy. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Face. Any other questions or comments from council? Move to adopt the <coughs> resolution. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Discussion from council. Council, please vote. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item seven, uh, we're going to ask the bill to come up. Consideration of approval of certain general fund and solid waste fund write off. And I'm going to ask Ms. Honeycutt with health and sanitation. And also, Judge Blake Anderson, I think, is he still here? Nope. Left? Okay. On the city court. But you all have his plan of increasing the collections at city court. And that's been very productive for almost the, the last year. So you all have that in front of you, I think. Ms. Bell? Okay, the <clears throat> first write-off that you have is the police department parking tickets from 2010 to 2015 in the amount of $2,231, and also extra duty invoices for the police department in the amount of $150. Okay. And Mayor will need to vote on each of these individually. So move. Second. Motion, second. <clears throat> Discussion? Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Okay, the second set of write-offs that we have is for uh, property tax uh, based upon the 10-year statute limitations, 2004 property tax, base penalty and interest total $81,617.87. So moved. Second. That's over what period, Karen? Uh, just last year? These are 2004, 10 year, 2004. These are 10 years old. Yes, sir. So that's a pretty good collection. Not bad like off of $29 million, yeah. 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 Okay. We <clears throat> have a motion and a second. We have a motion. And a second? A okay, and a second. Do we, do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Okay. Discussion with council? Council, please vote. Okay. The motion passes with seven in favor, one abstaining. The next set of write offs that we have is return checks and unreconciled checks. Return checks in the amount of $602. Unreconciled payroll, $1,532.06. Unreconciled accounts payable, $4,994.69. Motion to approve. Have a motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion from council. Council, please vote. And the motion passes seven in favor, one abstaining. The next set of write offs is the garbage write offs in the amount of $12,840.48. 
So moved. Second. Kathleen, how's that happen? I, I think I know, but people leave town. We can't catch them, and they won't pay. And That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, where we have uh, commercial accounts that change ownership, that they leave town, don't pay for their bills, sell their business, and when we have exhausted everything in the department as far as collection, then we turn it over to the collection agency, and these mm -hmm. are accounts that were not collectible. Okay. How much, how much is that amount, Karen? <coughs> how much was that amount? Oh, that amount is $12,840.48. And we bill how much per month for commercial, roughly? 300000 Yeah, okay. Just, and that's for, just for commercial. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> any questions on that one? Motion. <coughs> Motion. Second. I have a second. Uh, discussion, Council. Council, please vote. Thank you. And the vote is unanimous. And the last set of write-offs that we have is delinquent city court fines. Again, I provided you the amounts. The FY13 is $352,044.50. The FY14 is $277,964.40. Dramatic decrease from prior years, so I think they're doing a great job working on some things over there. Judge has implemented a new program. It seems to be, be working very effectively, and I think it will continue to, to get better. So with that, is there a motion for approval? So and these are court fines. <clears throat> Those are court fines. These are delinquent okay. court fines, yes. So moved. Have, have a motion and a second. Discussion from council. Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item 8 is consideration of board appointments, the airport authority, recommending bill sites to continue to serve on that board. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Discussion. Council, please vote. The vote is unanimous. Under the codes advisory and appeals board, Todd Krasner, Todd Allen, and Hampton Williams. Move the approval. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion. Yeah. Council, please vote. <coughs> and under the Jackson Energy Authority, the reappointment of Ken Marston. So moved. Second. Motion, second. Discussion? Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Item 9 is budget amendments. We have three budget amendments this month. The first one that we have is for the Jackson Police Department. They're purchasing two replacement vehicles that were wrecked in the traffic division, the patrol division, for $30,000 each. They're also purchasing a locking storage box for $1,300 for the administration and a printer for $3,500, laptop computers for $1,000. These funds are being moved from the general fund from insurance recoveries for the two vehicles in the amount of $45,000. Remainder of funds will be pulled from the Federal Equal Sharing Reserve. No draw on fund balance. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Okay, the second amendment that you have before you today for the capital budget is uh, to complete street resurfacing on areas related to Van Drive in the amount of $166,000. This will require a draw on fund balance. So moved. Have a motion. Second. We have a second. Oh, Discussion? Oh. Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. The last amendment that you have before you today is for the Central Dispatch Capital Budget in the amount of $250,000 for a new tower for the radio system that is being put up, and this also will require draw on fund balance. So moved. Second. second. Motion to second. Discussion? Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bell. <coughs> Final item is consideration of invoices over $10,000. So moved. The motion. Second. 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 The discussion? Council, please vote. There being no further business, the meeting is adjourned. All right.